Why? Why? Well, very distracting. BFM 89.9, good morning. I'm Melissa Idris, sitting in for Shira Kutten today. It is Wednesday, the 15th of January. Welcome back from the public holiday. I'm here to catch you up on the news that you may have missed while you were relaxing. Um, today, looking through the papers, it seems to be a tale of royalty and foreign workers. So two separate themes going through the papers, a, a similar thread. So the guy who claimed to be Sultan Malacca, uh, Noor Jan Shah, he was arrested by cops uh, yesterday at 11 o'clock while in the middle of an interview with Harian Metro, Cosmo and Utusan. I mean, if you were the reporter, best gila, scoop galore. Uh, that's why it's probably the reason it's on the front cover of those papers. Utusan has Sultan Melaka ditahan. Harian has tak sempat beri pingat. Oh, what a shame. And um, the star and the sun also saw that it merited some front cover space. So uh, Sultan held. Now the story is his followers were waiting for his arrival on Pulau Besar, which is an island of Malacca, for this grand um, investiture event where he was going to give medals. That's why tak sempat beri pingat and also uh, a grand feast, but the cops arrested him before he could even get on the ferry. He's been arrested for sedition. From fake kings to uh, real ones, Berita Harian says that Raja Raja Melayu Bimbang, why are they worried? It's because the Yang Nipatuan Agong actually brought it up in his royal decree or his titah during Mali Doraso yesterday. He said that there's a tendency for Muslims to engage in uh, polemics on tribal issues, um, on trivial issues that is, or and that will only portray a poor image of uh, the community and make us look immature. Your Highness, I, I couldn't agree more with you. I think that's completely true. Now moving on, um, the other theme is foreign, on foreign workers. The Edge has a full cover on this, uh, the impact from minimum wage. So it argues that the policy could affect 1.8 million workers, mostly migrant workers, um, against the 1.5 million last year. So. The story is that last year the government put into place a minimum wage which is 900 for Peninsula, 800 for Sabah Sarawak. They deferred the minimum wage for foreign workers until end of last year. Bam! January 1st, 2014, it hits us and it looks like the Malaysian Employers Federation says SMEs will be hit the hardest. So I'm wondering, could there be a trickle-down effect for the cost of SMEs to operate and might that hit us as consumers? In a related story, um, under the big foreign worker theme, Malay Mail says that TB is now worse than dengue. Why? Because they say that um, foreign workers form the bulk of food handlers in Malaysia and that probably has led to the rise of TB cases, eclipsing dengue case fat uh, fatalities in Malaysia. That's raised concerns over immigrants entering Malaysia without medical tests. Um, Sabah's got the highest number of TB cases and it is the highest cause of death among infectious diseases. My question is, should we be scared? Yes, we should. Is it a scare tactic? I'm not sure. It could be because, you know, this is all kind of in line with the government's big announcement that they were going to crack down on foreign workers next Tuesday. It feels like a concerted effort on all platforms to scare us a little bit on the dangers of foreign workers. So, I, I wonder, can we expect more stories like this to come? and should foreigners alone be blamed. Moving on to uh, New Straits Times, they've got an exclusive on their cover. Putting fear into illegal farmers. Can you see the photo of Cameron Highlands? That's Cameron Highlands there. The Pahang government has finally admitted that illegal land clearing in Cameron Highlands is quote-unquote getting out of control. So now they're planning a massive offensive against the culprits. Um, they say that this new inter-agency operation will be different and that there will be no let up to ensure that the district is spared from the ravages of men driven by greed. I don't know whether this is too little too late. I'd like to see something be done, please. But, you know, let's try and save Cameron Highlands. Anyone who's ever been there knows that you can see the impact of the ravages of men driven by greed. So yeah, let's do something about that. And quickly before we wrap up, we've got this buried inside the papers of NST, the pullout that says cash for trash. Now um, this, this temple is expecting a lot of people coming to come during Cyprusum and that means a lot of trash. So they're offering 50 cents for each bag of garbage collected. Good for them, but sad for us that we need a cash incentive to keep an area clean. Do we need a cash incentive? 
really? Like, what does it say about us? So yeah, 50 cents per bag of trash if you want to be entrepreneurial that day, head down to the temple there and you know, do your bit to keep the area clean. I'm Melissa Idris bringing you the morning headlines today. Come back and join me tomorrow where I will bring you more headlines. Um, that's all from me for today on BFM 81.9.